David Attenborough once said, Everyone likes birds. What wild creature is more accessible to our eyes and ears, as close to us and everyone in the world, as universal as a bird? While this is a nice quote, it's not true. The topic of this video is a bird that's liked by many, but also hated by some. Before we get into the story of how Bird became the fastest startup to reach a $1 billion valuation, I want to welcome you to Business Successful, where it's all about successful founders and businesses. The Beginning It all began when Travis Vander Zanden, former Chief Operating Officer at Lyft and Vice President of International Growth at Uber, bought a Xiaomi M365 scooter. He found it so elegant and convenient that he thought to himself, why are we using two tons of metal to move 70 kilograms of bodies around while something that weighs 16 kilograms like an e-scooter can do the job so well? And why are we giving away so much space in cities to cars? Travis van der Zanden became more and more interested in this idea. So he contacted his previous boss, David Oliver Sachs. He wasn't as enthusiastic about the idea as Travis, however. Even though Travis tried his best to convince him, the idea was just too crazy for David. How can people rent a scooter and leave them wherever they want, he wondered. Most people were as skeptical as David, but there were some who recognized the potential, like the guys at Goldcrest Capital, who gave him $3 million to start. He priced the bike this way. Anyone over the age of 18 with a valid driver's license can grab a scooter for $1 and will be charged 15 cents per minute of use. People would also need to wear a helmet and, obviously, stay off the sidewalks. But the new company was frowned upon, especially since most people in Santa Monica didn't expect these electric scooters popping up out of nowhere in the city. There were also no laws which specifically banned or permitted it. The only regulations coming close were the city's regulations governing sidewalk food stands. We are not selling hot dogs and tacos, Travis van der Zanden said. Difficulties Van der Zanden wasted little time exploiting the area and alerted the mayor of Santa Monica, Ted Winterer, via a LinkedIn message that many more birds were coming. He told him, We have $3 million in venture funding to focus on the traffic and parking problems in Santa Monica and Venice. And he added, I'd love to work together. The mayor's response was far less cheerful, however, which may have been because van der Zanden's letter was sent after the first birds had already landed in the city. The mayor said, Your company is the one deploying electric scooters in the public right of way. My understanding is there are serious legal issues with doing so. He then referred van der Zanden to other city officials. But many residents of this beachfront community proved far more enthusiastic. Chaos quickly ensued. Teens caused damage by ignoring traffic laws while double riding, and pedestrians tripped over discarded scooters that clogged the walkways. Some of these accidents involved serious head injuries. Birds zip along at 15 miles an hour, and only few of the people trying them wore helmets. So hundreds of fines were issued to riders. Six months after the scooters appeared, Bird agreed to pay $300,000 to settle a nine-count misdemeanor criminal complaint charged by the city attorney's office. Further, they agreed to lower the top speed to one mile per hour and began offering free helmets. They also promised to pick up the randomly scattered scooters after 8 p.m. and replace them in the morning. Growth Basically, everything went more or less according to plan. Bird unleashed a cultural phenomenon, sparked a VC frenzy, and became the clear leader of a group of e-scooter rideshare companies like Lime, Spin, Lyft, and Jump, which is owned by Uber, with more of these companies seemingly arriving every day. 
Bird was the fastest growing of them all. In early 2018, Bird put up a thousand more bikes in Santa Monica and claimed that 50,000 people were using them. Investors, seeing this demand, became eager to invest in Bird. In October of 2017, Bird received a $15 million investment from Kraft Ventures, and in March of 2018, they gave Bird $100 million more. In May of 2018, only two months later, Bird raised $150 million in a round led by Sequoia Capital. In this round, Bird was valued at a billion dollars, making Bird a unicorn only 13 months after Travis van der Zanden had founded the company. This achievement made them the fastest company ever to reach unicorn status. To put that into perspective, Airbnb took almost three years to reach a $1 billion valuation, and Uber needed four. Four months after reaching unicorn status, the valuation of Bird reached $2 million. With the new money, Bird made plans for expansion, targeting Canada, Europe, New Zealand, and Latin America. By September of 2018, Bird was already in 100 cities in the United States, some small, like Russellville, Arkansas, and some large, like Los Angeles. Their expansion plans also went according to plan, and they can now be found in cities like Paris, Antwerp, Tel Aviv, London, and Mexico City. Managing the scooters Organizing this random transportation is no easy task. Bird imports e-scooters from China and then installs a mini-computer to connect a scooter to the company's software platform. With this software, the company can see where every scooter is located and lock and unlock the wheels and motor. They can even control a scooter's speed remotely. It's not as easy as building an app and putting the scooters out there, says van der Zanden. Every night, a swarm of freelancers must gather all the e-scooters wherever they've been parked or abandoned, recharge them, and relocate them to designated nests, where riders can easily find them for the morning's commute. It definitely hasn't been a smooth ride for birds so far. The bikes they imported from China, Xiaomi 365s, were made for consumer use, not rental use. So they broke up in only a matter of months. This got so bad that Bird was losing money on every ride. However, with the extra funding they got, they were able to introduce an in-house designed scooter, which was much better suited for the rental business. This scooter was called Bird Zero and opened the door to another business, selling scooters. But still, the maximum lifespan was only a year. Another issue facing Bird were the accidents. Van der Zanden's response to this is that accidents happen in every type of commute and that the scooters are not to be blamed for this. Conclusion Our mission is very strong. It's to remove cars from the road, reduce traffic, and reduce carbon emissions. Every city in the world could benefit from that, says van der Zanden whose relentless drive is perhaps matched only by his dedication to stressing Bird's vision at every possible opportunity. Van der Zanden positions Bird as a means to lower all the congestion to cities. To correct that, people need to let go of their car addiction, he believes. With better management systems and reliable vehicles, it's safe to say Bird will continue to fly high for the foreseeable future. Thank you for watching our video on Bird, and let us know your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more.